Hey guys, today I will be making my 2020 Senate election predictions between the Republicans and Democrats who are fighting to take control of the Senate after the 2020 elections. Currently, the Republican Party does have control of the Senate with 53 seats to the Democrats with 47. They are able to hold on to the majority after 20, the 2018 midterms, while the Democrats have not had control of the Senate since 2010. So looking at our map here, this is pretty favorable to the Democrats looking at it with 35 seats to the Republicans as the Republicans have 23 seats up for re-election with the Democrats only having 12. However, the Republicans are definitely going to have more safe seats than the Democrats will have in my opinion. So first, I'm just going to be filling in the safe seats. Honestly, there are so many seats on this map and the safe seats really are not worth talking about. So I'm just going to fill them all in. Jake Durbin in, in Oregon is going to win his seat. Uh, ben Ray Lujan is going to win his first six-year term in New Mexico. Illinois, Dick Durbin definitely going to win. New Hampshire, Jean Jaheen, no strong Republicans here. She's going to win her seat easily. The state of Massachusetts, Ed Markey, did defeat Joe Kennedy III in the primary last night. This was pretty unexpected. I mean, it was unexpected for quite a while. However, Markey was leading in the polls uh, leading up to the election. So he's going to win Massachusetts a very liberal state. Rhode Island definitely, uh, Jack Reed's going to win, Cory Booker is going to hold on to a seat in New Jersey, Chris Coons is going to win at Delaware, and then Mark Gordon is definitely going to carry the state of Virginia. And then for the Republicans, Idaho is going to win for them right here. Jim Rich is going to win the state of Wyoming. Cynthia Loomis is going to carry the state again. South Dakota, Mike Rounds, Republican incumbent is going to win. Nebraska, Ben Sass is definitely going to carry this once again. Oklahoma, Jim Inhofe is going to win this state for sure. Uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, very solid GOP states. West Virginia is also going to go to the GOP here with Shelley Moore Capito definitely going to carry her seat here. And that is basically it for all of the solid Republican seats on this map. So after filling in the solid Republican and Democratic seats, the Republican Party has 39 seats to the Democrats with 44. So I'm just going to move from the northwest to the southeast here, starting off with the state of Montana. Steve Daines, the Republican incumbent, leads by only four points against Steve Bullock, who was the popular former governor of the state. Steve Bullock was actually, was actually leading in polls leading up to this race, I mean leading up to the last couple of weeks. However, in the month of August, Steve Daines has been able to overtake Bullock once again, and he is now expected to win his seat another six years, and he said it for Steve Daines. So I think that this is going to be a lean seat for the Republicans here. And then next, the state of Kansas. In the state of Kansas, Roger Marshall, this is an open seat. Marshall is the Republican candidate, and Barbara Bollier is the Democratic candidate. Marshall is expected to win here. He leads by one point, so it's going to be a tilt state. Not too good for a Republican in a state like Kansas, but I think he's still going to win by around 1-2%. And then the state of Colorado. Currently, John Hickenlooper is expected to unseat Cory Gardner, the first flip of the night for the Democrats. He was by 8 points over Gardner. Gardner, honestly, not too good of a candidate right now, as Colorado has moved much further to the right, um, to the left since 2014, when he was able to win. He took office in 2015, but Colorado is, is expected to go to John Hickenlooper, who is also a very popular former governor, this time from the state of Colorado. And then in the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly leads by 10 points over Martha McSally, who is the incumbent. She did not win her seat. She was able to take it after the death of John McCain. She actually lost against him in 2018, I believe. But Arizona is going to go to, Marth, uh, to Mark Kelly. Martha McSally is going to lose her seat. I don't think she's going to serve a full term here. Mark Kelly is, of course, a former astronaut and the husband of Representative Gabby Giffords. So in the state of Arizona, Mark Kelly, he's up 10 points, definitely going down before Joe Biden here. And he's going to win a seat with a like, likely margin, pretty comfortable for his first race. And then I'm going to move on to the Rust Belt. The state of Minnesota, Tina Smith leads by six points. I think it's going to go to her. She is the incumbent. In state like Minnesota, this is still a Democratic state. So I think she's going to win another six years with a lean margin in the state of Minnesota. Definitely it's gotten closer from before, but I think she's still going to win her seat. Iowa, Tusa Greenfield is trying to unseat Joni Ernst, and she's doing a pretty good job at that. She leads by three points here. I think she's going to win her seat, honestly, with a tilt margin. It's going to be closer than the, poll, than the polls say. Joni Ernst has been serving for the state of Iowa for quite a while now, a couple of decades. But I think that Greenfield is going to unseat her. She leads by three points in the polls. She's doing pretty well here for a Democrat. So I think Iowa is going to go to Greenfield and the Democratic Party, putting them up at 48 seats. 
And then next, of course, Dick Durbin, of course, is going to be a solid seat for the Democrats. However, the state of Michigan, I don't think is going to be as solid as it once was. Gary Peters only lead by five points against John James. I think that Peters is definitely going to not overperform Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden is going to outperform him. But in the state of Michigan, I still think that Peters is going to win his seat with a likely margin. And then the state of Maine, honestly one of the most interesting races, I think, in my opinion. Sarah Gideon leads by six points over Susan Collins. Susan Collins, of course, was the very popular senator from the state of Maine just a couple of years ago. She won the last election with 34% of the vote. I mean, uh, it's 34% margin of victory. However, now she's down six points against Sarah Gideon. She's the most unpopular senator in, th in the entire country, so things are not looking too good for him. I think she's going uh, her I think she's going to lose her seat in the state of Maine. She's she of course has been representing this state for over 2 decades now. But I think that this is definitely a good sign for the Democrats and that her seat does put the Democratic Party up at 50 seats. The Republicans currently have 41. So if Joe Biden wins the election, the Democrats are definitely going to control the Senate. And then next, I want to take a look at the southeast region here, starting off with the state of Kentucky. This is Mitch McConnell's home state. He is a senator from the state. He's always been unpopular. He's the second most unpopular senator at the moment right now behind, of course, Susan Collins. But in the state of Kentucky, I think that he's definitely having one of the hardest races of his life. He's only four points up against Amy McGrath who is doing pretty well for a Democrat in a state like Kentucky. But I think that Mitch McConnell is going to hold this one out, and I think he's going to win his race here in the state of Kentucky by a lead margin. <clears throat> and then the next is the state of Texas. John Cornyn leads by six points against MJ Heger. I think that Heger really is not going to have the overall effect like we saw in 2018 when he was able to come within two points of Ted Cruz in the 2018 Senate elections. However, I think that... And I think the corn is definitely going to do much better than Cruz. I think he's going to win by around 6-7%. So a lean margin for the Republicans in the state of Texas. And then the state of Mississippi, we're going to move to the uh, East here. City Hyde Smith leads by 5 points against the Democratic nominee Mike Espy. I think Smith is going to win her seat. She's doing pretty well here. I mean, not too well, but I think that she's still going to carry her seat nonetheless. And then the state of Alabama, this is Doug Jones' seat. He is actually a Democrat in a state like Alabama. And I think that this is honestly the only vulnerable seat that the Democrats have uh, in 2020. Tommy Duberville, of course, is expected to unseat him. He's up 14 points in the polls. And I think he's definitely going to do so. I think it's going to be a likely seat for the Republicans, maybe even a solid seat. However, since that uh, Doug Jones is the incumbent, I'm going to give it to the Republicans as a likely seat. However, we will see how this race continues to shape in the future. And then moving on to the state of Alaska, Dan Sullivan leads by around five points against Al Gross. His lead really has the sh really has shrunk since last time we talked about this. The public pol uh, public policy polling does show a tie in the state. Al Gross is an independent, but I think that Dan Sullivan is still going to win his race with a lean margin. I've moved it down from likely, which was my prediction last time. And then we only have four more races from three states. First, the state of North Carolina. Currently, Cal Cunningham leads over Tom Tillis by 7%. Cal Cunningham is doing very well in this state against the Republican incumbent. And I think he's going to carry the state as a lean state at this point. This is just because he was not doing, he did, he did pretty poorly in one recent poll. However, before that, he was still doing pretty strong. But I think that he's not going to have a life margin. I think he's going to flip it with a lean margin. So this is the fourth flip of the night for the Democrats. And then the state of South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, a very well known political figure here, only leads by 1.5 points against Jamie Harrison. Jamie Harrison is not a well, you know, even a well known Democratic figure. However, he is outperforming. Um, I mean, out fundraising Lindsey Graham, which I think is pretty surprising to see in a state like South Carolina. But Lindsey Graham, I think that just because of his name recognition and the fact that he's been serving the state for over three decades, I think he's going to hold on to his seat in the state of South Carolina, albeit by a tilt margin. But I still think he's going to retain his seat for the Republican Party. Because I think that if he didn't, it would definitely be a disaster for the Republicans for them to lose a seat in a state like South Carolina. And then we have two more states, both out of the state of Georgia, the Georgia Senate election and then the Georgia Special Senate election. First off, John Ossoff leads over David Perdue by around one point. Perdue is the Republican incumbent. Ossoff is the Democratic candidate. And the Ossoff is going to win his seat here. He leads by one point. I think it's going to be a tilt margin for Ossoff. I think that with Georgia moving a lot more to the left from 2016, Georgia definitely, I think Ossoff definitely does have a very good shot at winning his first six-year term in the Senate. 
And then lastly, the Georgia special election. Kelly, Kelly Loeffler took office just this year in the beginning of this year. She lives by six points. I think she's going to win her seat. I think it's going to be a lean margin for the Republicans. So make that red. I think that she's definitely going to win. She's doing pretty well here. And I think she's going to have a pretty strong victory here for the state of Can uh, Georgia. And I think she's definitely going to outperform David Perdue here in the state of Georgia. And so this is my prediction for the 2020 Senate elections. I think Democrats are going to flip the Senate, winning 52 seats to the De Republicans with 48. So they are definitely going to have a majority in the Senate, which means that Joe Biden, if he were to win, would be able to pass most of the bills he would like. And if Trump were to win, then they would basically be able to block everything he wants to do, as the Democrats are also expected to win the House, which I will talk a lot more in depth about tomorrow. Yesterday, I talked about the 2020 presidential election. I made a prediction for that. So make sure you check out those other two videos when they come out. Uh, my presidential election predictions have already come out, so make sure you check that out after this video is over. And tomorrow, make sure you come back and watch my house prediction video. And if you enjoyed this video, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you could subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate that as well. We are very close to hitting 900 subscribers, and I really appreciate all of the support you guys have been giving me in the past couple of days. Leave your thoughts as well as video suggestions that you would like to see from me in the future in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next video.